Hi, it's Deborah Hamilton, and you are attending the MAP Community Call that helps people make plans for the care of their pets in the event something happens to them. And of course, the minute I get on, Mr. Juniper wants to come over and say hello. Uh, he is my six-year-old Irish setter who uh, is a little mooky today because he went for a dental appointment yesterday. So if any of you have ever brought your pets for a dental appointment, uh, you know that at least for 24 to 48 hours, because they're anesthetized, uh, they can be a little mooky. So I want to welcome everyone tonight. I want to welcome everyone who's going to listen to this later, because this is one of the most important programs that I'm going to put on for the MAP community. I have to tell you that I've had so many divorce attorneys get in touch with me and ask me to put together a prenup program for people to plan for the care of their pets. So for those of you who are new, MAP stands for something. It stands for make a plan, appoint caregivers, address the needs of your pet and publish that plan. Because if you don't publish it, nobody knows what you want to do with your pets. And we all want our pets to be cared for in a certain way. However, when we are dating someone, living with someone, I can tell you that most of the cases that come through my office when it comes to disagreements over the pets. Hi, Alex, good to see you. Uh, when people um, come into my office and there's a disagreement over the pets, it's because they either got the pet in the relationship or they came into the relationship and fell in love with their significant other's pet. Uh, and then the relationship breaks up and the pets go with the significant other um, or they're kept from the significant other. Uh, it's sort of like who ends up uh, with the seat uh, in uh, Ring Around the Rosy when we were younger or musical chairs when we were younger. Um, if you end up with the pet, uh, everybody says, oh yeah, I'm gonna bring it back to see you or oh yeah, I'll let you in to uh, see the pet. And that absolutely never happens. I can tell you that now, uh, I guess maybe people don't call me if in fact it does happen. And the people who do call me are the ones who believe their exes and then realize they were never gonna see their pet again. And pets are really important to us. There are now um, five states that allow for uh, the judge to make a decision on your pet. So if you want someone else to make a decision on who gets your pet, uh, there are four states that are now requiring judges through their domestic relations law to find out who is the best person using the well-being standard or the, uh, yes, the well-being standard of uh, the pets or the best interest standard of the pets. So in Illinois, which is one of the states, is the well-being of the pets. In California, Alaska, uh, and New York, so there are four states that have codified it, it's the um, best interests of the pet. And I can tell you right now, those things are not defined to any degree. So it really is subjectively dependent on how you present your care for your pet in court that day to the judge. In fact, in New York, the first case that used the new clause, uh, the dogs were awarded to the wife who stayed in the marital home. However, during all of the discussions, it was clear that the pets were pining for their father. She even said that, that the father walked them and fed them and took care of them. However, he couldn't find uh, housing that allowed two Rottweilers. And we know how that goes because those are two pretty big dogs. Uh, so he had to leave them behind. And so the judge said, well, I think that the wife made a more emotional position for keeping the pets. And since the pets are where they, there's a standard called lovey, which means that the pets will stay where they're feeling love and where they've been loved and where they've lived their life, they'll stay there. And I'm not saying that's not the best place for them. There are three things that have an issue that people have to recognize, which is why you want a prenup. So when the courts award the dog to party A or party B, there is no provision for party, the losing party, to see the pet again. So I want to say that to everybody so it really sinks in. If you go to court 
and you allow a judge to decide who is the best person for the animal. If like this guy, you had to move out of the house and you couldn't take the dogs with you, you might lose your dogs, even though they're your dogs, because they're in a place where they knew love, they were loved. And it's not to say that the wife is not going, the ex-wife is not going to take good care of the pets. It's that you're never going to see them again. And how does that make you feel? So that's why I'm having this important discussion today. And I hope everyone who's here will share the link with friends of theirs who are living with people um, or who are married to people and have a pet. Because you want to make these prenups before you dislike the other person. It is so important to make these prenups before you uh, get into the anger, because the anger can really create a, a an inability to consider what is in the best interest of the pet. Now, a lot of animal behaviorists will say, well, pets, you know, don't do well moving and uh, pets don't do well going back and forth to uh, people. I don't know if everyone here, and I'm going to check in in a few minutes, uh, has ever left their pit, pet with a significant other. And if they have, the pet might be yours every minute and hour of the day that you're in the house. However, when you're not there, if you check in with your significant other, I can tell you, because my husband tells me all the time. In fact, today he called me, I went to get my hair cut and he called me, he goes, are you not home? So this isn't a very big house, really scary that he didn't know I wasn't home. I could have been dead. Uh, and I said, no, I'm not home. He goes, I thought so. Cause Junie was down here in the office with me. He was by me and he's never by me when you are here. So remember that your significant other is that go-to person for your pet. I don't care if they've never fed them or done anything else. If you're not there, that other person is the go-to person. And so if you really want to think about what's in the best interest of the pet and for the well-being of the pet, knowing that that other person that that pet will go to is the person who you have in your plan, that's great. So you want to make a prenup or a, a pre-plan. If you're living with someone, uh, you want to make sure that you talk about this. And so what do you want to cover when you talk about this? Well, if you're coming into a relationship with a pet, recognize that unless somebody's really freaky, they're going to fall in love with your pet. I know my son has a beautiful cat, Jane, right now, and his current girlfriend, who we love, uh, loves Jane. And so if anything happened and they broke up, if, say, she was taking care of Jane, um, she could just keep Jane. Oh, look at the baby, Alex. I love the baby. Um, so she could keep Jane. I don't think she would keep Jane, but right now, you know, they are in, in love. They, they love Jane. They love each other. So this is the time. And I will broach the subject with them when I see them over the weekend to just sit down and say, what would happen? Because I think that Liana would miss seeing Jane, even though she doesn't see her, she doesn't live with her because they don't live together, but she sees her on a regular basis. And if something happened to Drew, you know, I'm sure that Jane would really prefer to be with Liana, especially not with me. It's funny when uh, uh, Jane comes home to our house for holidays, I have dogs and I am persona non gratis. I am the only person in the house that she does not come to. Uh, because I probably smell the most like dog. I am always surrounded by dogs. So for her, I am the antichrist uh, because the dogs don't really um, understand cats, so they don't get along. But in the scheme of things, we'd want to have an agreement that says, listen, I know that you love Jane and you take care of Jane. And if I go on vacation or if I go, if I had travel on business trips, I actually helped a couple who had broken up and for a year shared the dog. Every time the guy went on a business trip, um, he would drop the dog off before he left and pick the dog up. Now, this is really good for your pocketbook because the significant other understands that this is the relationship they have. You write something down. I know people don't ever like to write anything down, but you write it down and you, this person takes care of the dog while you're away and you don't have to pay a walker and you don't have to pay boarding. Um, and they get the benefit and the dog gets the benefit of the change in venue and, and being with the other person. Um, it's, 
it's incomprehensible when you're mad at someone to think about this kind of sharing. It is so easy to think about a plan when you still like the person and you recognize how much your pet, your cat, your dog, your bird, your horse um, loves the other person. Uh, it, it it just makes sense. So if you really want to do what's best for your pet, making a prenup or making a pre-transition into living together um, agreement, uh, this is very important because all of the laws that are in the domestic relations world only apply to married couples. So if you're living with someone and you have pets, there is no, in New York, Illinois, Alaska, or California, law that applies to you. The law only applies to people who are married. So if you're in a relationship and you're sharing a pet, um, I know that people who are listening to this, and I'll check in with Alex and Stephanie to see whether or not they have pets and they have significant others. And did they get the pets before they got into a relationship or did they get the pets during their relationship? because it's really important to make sure that you recognize, and it's okay, by the way, to say, no, I'm gonna take the dog when I go. It's just be transparent. And if you do decide to do that, three things that I want people to understand, whether they're married and going through the courts and the dog is awarded or cat is awarded to one party over another, or you're leaving a relationship, you're, you've already planned to take the dog with you. So there are three things that are really difficult. One is um, you have no more financial support for the care of that dog. If you cut ties, uh, you have no more mutual financial support. And maybe the significant other didn't pay anything for the dog or the cat or the bird or the horse. But if they did, um, there's that goes away. And if they didn't, you probably knew that if something tragic happened, they would help you. De, you know, defer the costs. Um, so that goes away when you cut ties and take the pet and leave. And that's that's fine. Just be aware of it. Um, the second piece is that the person can take the pet and then they can drop it off at a shelter. There is no requirement for them to pick up that phone and call you and say, you know, lost my job, lost my house. You know, my new girlfriend, new boyfriend is allergic. Uh, would you like to take Fluffy? Now, why is that important? Because Fluffy really knows the other person and wouldn't mind being transferred to the other person if something in your life changed and you could no longer keep it. Uh, it's much better than dropping it off at a shelter. Um, and finally, the fact that you're unable to maintain communication um, for the life of the dog really sends the dog into a little bit, or cats, not so much, but dogs, absolutely into a little bit of a tizzy because uh, they miss um, the, the pet. The three things you have to worry about is one, if you don't make a plan um, and you don't make a prenup or a pre-relationship plan for your pet uh, and you become angry with your uh, significant other, then trying to find a reasonable way to uh, have the pet live its best life, get slimmer and slimmer. Uh, if you go to court because you're married, then the judge is going to award it to one person or the other, and you're not going to be able to see the pet again uh, if it's awarded to the other party. And it's not a slam dunk that you bought the dog, that you paid for all the food, that you paid for the vet medicine, that you paid for everything, uh, because if the dog is in the home and uh, is living a life where it feels loved and you're not necessarily in a, in a space where you can provide the same um, accoutrement, then you might not get the dog. Uh, so you really want to make sure you have this prenup or relationship um, agreement put together. Um, and also you want this relationship uh, agreement put together so that if you want the dog back, no strings attached, which is fine. Uh, it happens and it, it shouldn't be seen as, as negative or as selfish. You just really want to be transparent. You want to let people know that this is my dog. 
He's six years old. I've had him for six years. I'm now getting into a relationship with you. Um, and I love you. And I know that my dog will learn to love you and probably fall in love with you. Uh, however, if this doesn't work out, I don't want expectations to be that we will share him if that's what you want to do. And it might be what you want to do. And that's fine. Just be transparent about expectations while you still like each other. Because believe me, if you set expectations up, once you're angry with each other, it is really difficult to have that conversation. Um, so to summarize before I check in with everyone, California, Alaska, uh, New York, and Illinois have domestic relations law that deals with the either the well-being in Illinois or the best interests of the pet for couples in divorce. So the judge is going to make the decision where the dog goes if people can't decide on their own. So you're giving this very subjective decision to someone who really doesn't know you and doesn't know your dog. So if you have a prenup um, or you have a relationship agreement, if you're not married, because these laws do not apply to unmarried couples who have pets. So it, it really makes it important for you to understand that if you're married, there are laws in four states that will help you decide who gets the pet. However, if you can do that before, then you're not giving it to a judge so he can subjectively decide um, under the law who would be the best person for the pet. Uh, don't presume that you're going to win. I can tell you that has not necessarily been the case. So you really want to prepave and be transparent about what happens to your pet if something happens to your relationship. And uh, making these plans, so the MAP plan always wants you to prepave. One of the Ds is divorce, um, and it's also dissolution of relationship, right? Because if you're not gonna see each other anymore and you brought a dog in or you got a dog or you brought a cat in and you got a cat together, you know, this is the last best thing most people have done. And so for us, it's really important um, to make sure that we plan for that care of that pet. Uh, so if you're in a relationship, sit down and have that conversation. Uh, it's, it's not a difficult conversation. I'm always here to help people have conversations, but it's not a difficult conversation to have because you can really flesh it out. And so my mediation hat will go on now. And I will say, don't walk up and say, hey, by the way, Rose, um, I know we've been living together for the past five years, uh, but if something happens, I'm taking Junie and hitting the road. Uh, because that's just going to be such um, a difficult uh, information to hear. So what you want to do is you want to sit down and say, listen, I... Rose, I know both of us love Junie and I know that I came into the relationship with Junie or we got Junie in the relationship together and Junie is very important to both of us. But we know that Junie does this and does this and does this. Uh, and so I would like to decide how we would move forward. I'd like to have Junie outright um, and let you, you know, get pictures and texts and things like that, or not, depending on what you want to do. Um, or I'd like to figure out how we can share Judy. Um, so that if I'm traveling or I go on vacation, Judy doesn't have, you know, he does terrible in kennels. Judy doesn't have to go to a kennel um, and have that conversation. Um, I always have my clients when they come in to me and ask me to help them make these plans. Uh, I always say to them, so what's your vision for Junie's future? Uh, what would you like uh, Junie to be? And sometimes it's so easy because one of the parties says, well, I know that Deborah really loves Junie. And she feeds him and she walks him and she does everything. And do I like being with him when she's not there? Absolutely. However, I'm not necessarily in a position nor do I want to be in a position where I have to take care of him 24-7. Uh, so if she wants to take him, great. Uh, and if she wants to see if we could work out uh, whatever it is that we could work out together for me to see him on vacations or stuff or over the weekends, uh, I'm open to talking about that. 
I don't recommend like a week on a week off. People have worked that out beautifully. I have to say that I've had three or four clients who did it much to my chagrin um, and it worked out beautifully. However, it's a little hard on the dog to go back and forth um, unless you live in the same area and you just get the dog walker or, you know, a taxi to take the dog from point A to point B. Uh, and that works. Uh, so I'm going to uh, ask uh, Alex and Stephanie, if she wants, um, what's your status right now? And do you have uh, anyone that you would have to share your pet with uh, so that you would have to make a, 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 a pet nup, uh, pre nup, pup nup, uh, or if you would make a relationship set up. Alex, I'm going to start with you. Um, I don't have anyone that I'm sharing um, a pet with. I do have um, a, someone that I know passed away before and left and I was left with their cat and I didn't um, end up wanting to, I love the cat like more than anything, but it was really a reminder of the situation. So it was the, one of the s small times that it's okay to rehome a pet that you did accept um, responsibility for. So um, I did find them, him a home and um, luckily they allowed me to come see the cat whenever I want. And um the cat is still very happy, but I didn't think about it in, before. And if they had not let me, oh my goodness, I would have been extremely upset. Their um, phone actually eventually turned off because it's an older couple and like 90-ish and the husband passed away. So their phone stopped working. And I was really worried that I would never get to see the cat again, but I showed up to the house and thank goodness. Yeah, she got a new phone and now she's actually moved to North Carolina with the cat. But it was one of those situations where... um if it had been someone that wasn't just such a great, you know, a great person, they had no reason to keep staying in touch with me. So I wish I, I mean, luckily it worked out fine, but I wish I um, did have something in place for before that anyways. It's really important because making sure that you have something in place, so you have your pet and I know you're making your map plan and you have all the people lined up to take the pet, God forbid something happened. But I can tell you that someone just called me the other day to ask how to re-register a dog of a person who's dead to someone else. Um, and this person doesn't own the dog and the person who's getting the dog obviously doesn't own the dog because the person who owned the dog died. Uh, and she left no directives, but they found a great home for the dog and the person would like to do agility and rally and all sorts of AKC events, but they need, they could get an ILP number, but they have an AKC number. Um, and so there's a form for AKC where if you submit the death certificate, the dog can then be transferred to whomever. But there were no directives. She said, well, I used to groom her dogs. And so when she died, uh, everybody said, well, you groomed her dogs, you take her dogs and you place her dogs. And, you know, that's people coming to the aid of their countrymen. Uh, mm -hmm. However, is that exactly what you want? I mean, you were blessed to find somebody who wanted the cat when you couldn't keep it for the emotional reasons that it brought up in you. Uh, but yet you could see it because you knew. And, and probably if they had had an issue, they knew they could probably call you because you would be in the cat's life and either help them rehome it again or take it back for the duration of its life because it's probably somewhat older now. So Stephanie, I'd love to know your pets and um, if you're in a relationship or not, or if you have any plans set up. Thanks, Deborah. Um, I have one cat, Yoda, and I am single. And basically my mother and I are like the primary caregivers for the cat. And that's basically the main setup. Great. Do you live with your mom, if you don't mind my asking? Yes. So that's great. Um, we often tell people that if they have a primary caregiver, uh, that they put a little sign on their refrigerator. I think, Alex, you probably put one up on your refrigerator because I'm crazy about this. Uh, but you want to put a little sign up on your refrigerator that says, in case of an emergency, um, please call this person or this person, which if there were, God forbid, was an emergency with your mother, the number they would call would be you or vice versa. If there was an emergency with you, they'd call your mother, but also someone else, maybe a next door neighbor who sort of watches everybody and keeps everybody safe so that they also know that the cat is supposed to stay in the apartment because, or the house, uh, because when you are, God forbid, or your mom, um, you're at work, your mom takes ill, EMT comes, God forbid, all God forbid, uh, they can't really leave the pets in the house. 
uh, unattended and unless they have a note somewhere. Uh, so if you don't want to leave somebody's name or number up on the fridge, because that looks beautiful, not, uh, I often say, just put a note uh, on the somewhere that says directions for the cat are in the bright yellow file uh, on the counter next to the refrigerator or wherever you put it uh, so that they know that the cat has a plan. Don't touch the cat, leave it where it is um, and make sure that, uh, you know, the person who uh, is the third person beside you and your mom um, knows that they are the third person. We had uh, Sally tell us one weekend, who's a member of the the um, group, the that she walked into someone's house and saw her name on their refrigerator. And she said, wait a minute, I didn't even know I was the person who was going to get this dog if something happened to them. So it's really good to make sure you tell the people who you might be, you know, at least enlisting um, to keep the cat uh, in its home uh, and it, to make sure that they advise EMTs. Uh, but if you do get involved in any sort of relationship and, you know, you guys move in and everything is wonderful and perfect, uh, as you're doing it, if you bring the cat or you leave it with your mom, um, just make sure that you, you know, decide what, what's going to happen with the cat. And this is not a stagnant document. So when you first move in, right, with someone you really feel strongly for um, and probably knows your cat or your dog, um, you, you might say, you know, I really like you and I think this is going to work, but if it doesn't work, you know, I'm going to take Fluffy and leave with Fluffy. Um, and I am trying to, I want to say watermelon, but that's not your dog's name, Alex. It, what your dog's name isn't watermelon, but it's something really funky. Wiggle. You got the W. I, I knew it was a W. So I was close. And Stephanie, what's your cat's name? Yoda. Yoda, right. Okay. So we have Y and W. Perfect. So, you know, I love Yoda. Um, I love Wiggles and I love sharing Yoda and Wiggles with you. But for the first, you know, time while we're together, uh, I love that you want to get to know Wiggles. I know that you, I love that you want to get to know Yoda. However, if anything happens, I, I just want to be totally transparent and upfront with you. Um, Yoda and Wiggles are going with me if, if it doesn't work out. And, and I want that to be something that isn't difficult between us because it's really important that you get to know Wiggles and you get to know Yoda, um, but that we know that if something happens. And then a year or two down the road, um, if you are getting more serious, um, if you want to get married, whatever, then decide what that outcome will be. Because once you get married, remember in the courts in New York and California and Illinois and Alaska, the judges are required if you can't decide uh, to make a decision for you, which in my opinion sucks. And I have told a number of judges, unfortunately, um, that it sucks. And they look at me like I have 17 heads because I, I say to them, listen, you don't ever consider uh, what happens to the pet if the um, primary owner dies. I said, are they required to call that other person who went to court and wanted the dog or the cat? Uh, no, they aren't. So you are not assured that if in fact, you know, something happens to you and the only person who can take the dog is your ex, but you hate your ex. Uh, however, the dog, this is my, my claim to fame, this quote, unfortunately, your pet doesn't hate your ex. You wish they would. It would be a really great day in America if your pet would hate your ex. However, they don't. And so in a room full of strangers and your ex, your cat and your dog will go to your ex, you know, unless they beat them, which of course you guys wouldn't be involved with people who weren't nice to your cats and your dogs. So, you know, hello. Uh, but you really need to know that if the judge makes a decision, then that's over with. And maybe you'll get involved with someone else. Then you got to start all over again. Um, however, if something happens to you, you're on a vacation, you're on a trip, something happens, you're delayed, um, you become disabled, you're in the hospital there, you can't get home right away. You know, the best person to maybe tap on their shoulder would be your ex because maybe they still live nearby. Maybe, you know, whatever it is, uh, it would be something to always have in your back pocket. But once the judge makes his decision, that is no longer uh, applicable first of all, because the other party is usually incredibly angry. And so they're not really going to talk to you. Um, 
And so you you lose the ability to have them as an heir and a spare, right? So um, Stephanie has her mom and um, Alex has her parents, I think, and then others to take care of Wiggles. Um, so there are, there are people in your life that can take care of Wiggles. Uh, but if there isn't anybody else in your life, and this ex is the closest thing to someone who would be able to take care of your pet, you really want to be able, because the pet doesn't dislike your ex, he would like it too, as I said, but it doesn't. So if something comes up short-term, long-term. So Alex, you told us perfectly, this was a cat that you knew from a prior relationship that you really liked. It brought up a lot of not so great memories. So you really didn't want to live with it, but you were happy to take it when nobody else wanted it and then find it an appropriate home. Well, this is what we all hope for. We hope for our ex, if in fact they don't want to keep the pet, will help find it a new home because we're relying on people to do something for us that we can't do for ourselves because we're not able to. We're either, God forbid, dead or maybe we are disabled or maybe we have dementia or whatever. There are so many reasons why you need to rehome your pet. And believe me, I loved Alex when you said, and I got to still see her because I really wanted to see the cat, uh, but I just couldn't take it on. That's what all of us want to do. So if we are suffering with dementia or we are suffering going through chemotherapy and we just can't care for our dog every single day, if someone or our cat if someone is able to take the cat and bring the cat to you, if you're unable to get to them or let you come and visit the cat, that's like the best of all worlds because you know the cat's safe. They know they have you as an heir and a spare, a backup. Um, and you you are honoring the relationship you had with that animal um, during the relationship you had with this person that didn't work out. So to wrap up, because it's seven o'clock and I want to appreciate everyone's time, make sure that if you get into a relationship, have that conversation up front. If you have a pet and you're coming into the relationship with a pet, if you get a pet together while you're in relationship, have that conversation. It's not so hard to have when you still like the person say, listen, what would, what would be the best for Fluffy if, in fact, you and I break up? Would it be that Fluffy, you know, is with me six months of the year? In the um, 13 years that I've been doing this practice, helping people resolve these conflicts when they break up, I have had people who have shared dogs week to week, and it worked. I don't recommend it, but it worked. I've had people who flew the dogs from one coast to the next coast. And it worked because they just at first wanted to kill each other. Uh, it never was easy at first, but once we got them away from being angry with each other and got them back to that place where they were when they loved the pet, we were able to find a resolution that worked so well for the pet and, and pretty well for the owners as well. I mean, everybody would like the dog 24 seven or would like the cat 24 seven, However, maintaining this relationship, especially if it's a deep relationship and you know that the cat or dog really loves the other person uh, because you never know what's going to happen. And as I said, it's always good to have somebody as an heir and a spare. So before I wrap up, um, I'd love to ask the two of you what your thoughts are on this and what you think would right now would be something important for you to consider if you got into a relationship. I'm going to start with you, Stephanie, if that's okay. Sure. I, I would say hypothetically that there would be like a discussion and then have um, my mom and I sort of both sign off on whatever the agreement settled on. And that's really great because your mother is sort of one of the people who Yoda looks to. So if you leave with Yoda because you're going to live with, you know, uh, Prince Charming um, and you want to make sure that that relationship is nurtured, if if your significant other um, cannot keep the pet, they know that the pet is supposed to go back to your mother and God forbid something happens to you, that the pet would always be shared among the three of you. I think that's what you sort of were intimating to that your mom would definitely be part of that picture uh, because 
you know, even if you have a significant other, you're going to travel and somebody's going to have to take care of the cat when you travel. Uh, people do go on vacation and cats don't necessarily like to go on vacation with you. And sometimes it's difficult to find a hotel. It's much easier to find a hotel for a dog than a cat. Uh, but you can, you know, this is something that your mother could be part of, which I think is wonderful uh, because when we do make the map plan, we have three caregivers. We don't just have one. We have three caregivers because God forbid you get sick or someone gets sick. You want to make sure there's someone there to care for the cat. If you're taking care of someone or if someone's taking care of you. So great, great response. Alex, what do you think with wigs, wiggles? Um, my ex actually is the person first on the list and um, didn't work out between us. So I'm not saying he's my favorite, but uh, she she does love him. And uh, he actually kind of has the same issue. Pretty much the only time we hang out is he says, like, his dog is really missing me. So um, maybe he's just saying that for a reason. But um, also, I would say I'm talking to someone else. And if I do even start dating him, I'll I'm still going to keep uh, my ex, Daniel as the person because um you know unless somehow they developed a, a strong relationship too but at this point this um the new guy i like is not a huge dog lover um which is just dumb but he he does have a cat so it's not don't worry he doesn't hate hate pets he's, or anything but he loves animals he's just more of a cat guy than a dog guy my son was a dog guy and now he has a cat and now he's a cat guy so i get it yes so i want and also yeah like uh I have to first even just get my dog to get him to let him not be worried about having a dog around his cat. And um, anyways, if they develop a relationship, maybe I'll replace Daniel on the list. But for now, um, Daniel is still number one because he's number one for Wiggles. Exactly. Yeah. And that's and that's what you have to really get over. Um, and kudos to you, Alex, that you were able to do that even with a breakup and probably after a breakup was when you got there. Um, because most people don't think about this when they're blissfully happy because it's never going to happen. And then it happens. And then you're like, oh, shit, we're in the middle of this terrible breakup. And now we have to talk about the dog or the cat. I, I want to jump out of my skin. Uh, so it is it is difficult. And um I don't want to have anyone think that making a prenup, I do believe in prenups. If you approach it uh, with a mediator or with an attorney that's not setting it up, you know, to make sure I keep mine and I keep yours, uh, but rather that you have someone there who helps you find the best path forward uh, so that all of you just, you know, thrive. I want to thank both of you for being such great um, collaborators with me tonight, because it is really important for people to understand the need for uh, the MAP plan, but also the incredible need for a prenup or a relationship agreement when you bring pets in or you acquire pets. Because unfortunately, your pet doesn't hit your ex. And if push comes to shove, they're going to choose your ex. So make that easier by doing it while you still like each other. Uh, so this is Deborah Hamilton. You've been on the map call on prenup. And I am so grateful for Alex and Stephanie for being here. And until next time, kiss wiggles and Yoda for me. Take care.